The premise of any strategic perspective is that if managers align pay decisions with the organization's strategy and values, are responsive to employees and union relations, and are globally competitive, then the organization is more likely to achieve competitive advantage. The challenge is to design the fit with the environment, business strategy, and pay plan. The better the fit, the greater the competitive advantage. But not everyone agrees. In contrast to the notion of strategic fit, some believe that a set of best pay practices exists and that these practices can be applied universally across situations. Rather than having a better fit between business strategy and compensation plans that yields better performance, the view held by them is that using best practices results in better performance with almost any business strategy. The premise in this perspective is that adopting best pay practices will allow the employer to gain preferential access to superior employees. These superior people will in turn influence the strategy and be the source of its competitive advantage. If best practices do exist, what are they? There are two views about it. One view is that employee pay is to be based primarily on market rates. In this view, pay increases depend on performance and not on cost of living or seniority increases. The employment relationship is a partnership in which success, and risk, is shared. The other set of best practice is described as high commitment strategy. In this view, the idea is to have high base pay, sharing performance success only, and not the risk, guaranteeing employment security, promoting from within, and the like. These practices are believed to attract and retain a highly committed workforce, which will become the source of competitive advantage. It would be nice to be able to say which compensation strategy best fits each situation or which list of best practices truly represents the best. Unfortunately, little research has directly examined the competing views. One study examined eight years of data from 180 U.S. companies. The authors reported that while pay levels differed among these companies, these differences were not related to their subsequent financial performance. However, differences in the size of bonuses and the number of people eligible for stock options were related to future financial success of the organizations. This study concluded that it is not how much you pay, but how you pay that matters, thus bonuses and broadly based stock options, are examples of best practices. Virtuous and Vicious Circles Some studies suggest that emphasizing performance-based pay affects firm performance positively, only when the organization is already doing well. This phenomenon is like a circle, when there is success to share, success sharing plans work best. An organization whose profits or market share are increasing, is able to pay out larger bonuses and stock options. This incentives boosts employee performance. Improved employee performance results in improved organization performance, and so on. The circle gains upward momentum. But circles can also gain downward momentum. When organization performance declines, there are no bonuses, and the value of stock option declines, with potentially negative effects on organization performance. Declining organization performance increases the risk for employees. Risks come in the form of smaller bonuses, wage cuts, and even layoffs. This creates a risk-return imbalance that reinforces the downward spiral. Unfortunately, it is not clear what compensation strategy can be used to shift to an upward spiral, when an organization gets stuck in a downward spiral. 
These studies indicate that performance-based pay may be a best practice, only under the right circumstances. The question we would have to ask is, could performance-based pay sometimes become worst practice?